the primal screen. This is your host, Nick Greystone. For the next hour, we're going to talk about fantasy, reality, and everything in between. Let's go. Hey. So here we are. What up, what up, kitty, kitty, kitties? Oh, man, I don't even know what to say. I'm going to be honest. I have to be honest because honesty is always best. I'm nervous as shit right now. It's my first time doing this. Usually, you know, I stroll on the uh, on the set. I'm not commanding the uh, the ship. So, welcome to Primal Scream with Nick Greystone. I am Nick Greystone, aka the Nizza. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Tony, for producing me tonight here at Governor's Comedy Club. And uh, wow, the first episode. So. I'll, Wow, I'm a virgin right now. I guess it's going to hurt, but I'm going to like it. So I hope you guys like it too. Um, What made me want to do this, I've heard so many times, you know, you should do a podcast. You should talk about the stuff that you love. It's my normal day. I talk about music. I talk about movies. I talk about my uh, horror stuff, true crime. So I figured I might as well... Put that 10 pounds of shit in a 5-pound bag and put it out to you guys weekly. So that's what we go. So everyone always says that I'm the king of shout-outs, and I love starting off with shout-outs. So I do want to do a couple of birthday shout-outs right now. First and foremost, I'd like to give a shout-out to a guy that actually inspired me to do this. It's my best friend, Anthony DiDomenico. His birthday was yesterday, and he also said something to me before and i appreciate that so i'd like to say what he told me was don't be nervous you've done this a million times lights microphone nizza it's a different stage but the same game and you know what you're right bro thank you carnad i love you so that was the first birthday shout out So now, uh, the last couple of weeks, this last week was insane from Wednesday to Sunday. But in the middle of it all was my mother's 78th birthday. And she just wanted to be left alone. She didn't want to celebrate. So happy birthday, Ma. I hope you got what you wanted. And also the same day was my Uncle Sal's 80th birthday. So in true fashion, I continued to be the black sheep of the family and chose Metallica, Monster Mania, and Snoop Dogg over going to my uncle's 80th birthday. I know that is a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Sorry, Unc, I didn't make it, but you know I love you. So happy birthday, Unc. I hope you had a great party. Matt told me all about it, my brother Matt. I'll give him uh, always nods on here because he was the one that put me on the path of the horror and the music back in the day. So it's funny, I was talking to him on the way here, and he had mentioned um, about the shark attack, which is the uh, the big news today. You know, they've had drones flying over Jones Beach, but there was an actual shark attack in Rockaway Beach. And what he was telling me was that this is the first shark attack there from like 60 years. So uh, if you look that way... I got to figure that out because I'm looking at myself. But, yeah, if you look that way. Okay, all right. So if you look that way, that right there is the scar or the opening right now of the woman that was attacked. Uh, She did survive. Um, I'm not too sure about the leg right now, but uh, my brother said that he thinks that they saved it. But that's a nasty scar. So I got to give a shout out to my brother for because, like, dude, you see that stuff, but you're still out there paddling and doing your waves and stuff. And I commend you, man, because you got balls of steel. I ain't going into the water, maybe up to my knees just to, like, say hi and then get right out. But, uh, yeah, sharking. Sharks in the water. You're in the water. It's a bad shark. Mean fish. So, all right. So let's get into it. So... These last, uh, let's start on Wednesday. Wednesday, um, I went to go see Snoop Dogg. Now, Snoop Dogg has been on the scene for a long time. He's actually celebrating his 30th anniversary of Doggy Style, which is, right? 
it's just on un- Lord, yeah, that's crazy. 30 years ago. Like that brings me back to high school. Like it's just unbelievable. So I had the opportunity to meet Snoop Dogg, but beforehand, I um I I went to the uh to the merch booth and I bought this necklace. Um it, it's a Death Row Records necklace. And uh, yeah, you guys can see the picture. Now, on a normal size neck, it hangs low. But this is like a choker on me. So I kind of want to make Snoop laugh because that's what I do. So I walk up to him and um, I'm like, Snoop, I just want to ask you about something, man. I'm like, does this look good? Does this look like a choker or do I look like a gentleman? And he's like, nah, my G, you're on fire. You look good, son. And we laughed and we took some pictures and... uh, we are just, you know, it was pretty awesome meeting him. And uh, I was amazed that this dude did not stop smoking the whole time. Not just the meet and greet. He was smoking a blunt. But even when he goes out on stage, like, he did not stop. Like, blunt after blunt after blunt. Like, it's just unbelievable. I couldn't, be- you know. I don't smoke like I did back in the day. And really, that night, there was no need to because the entire place, even though it was outside, was engulfed in smoke um, from start to finish. You know, he came out in El Camino with the Scarface tune pumping. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's he's awesome. So many great songs, dancing, having fun. Um, he did a tribute to, to Biggie and to Tupac. And uh, that was the kickoff to my week. So now we move to Thursday. Thursday was a little rough getting up because I did have a hangover. But I had to head to, uh, to Cherry Hill, New Jersey for the annual Monster Mania uh, convention. But there was a little, uh, little different way this time. Metallica was also playing at MetLife Stadium for their new tour. They were playing two nights on Friday and Sa- and Sunday. So it was in the middle of everything. So in typical Nizza fashion, I was traveling the state of New Jersey back and forth the whole weekend. And I got to say, I definitely didn't make the right decision because I had the time of my life. So we'll talk about Metallica later because I'll get into that because that's a whole nother story. But Monster Mania... Monster Mania was so awesome. I got to meet up with like old friends who I consider my extended family because, as you know, like I said, I did miss my uncle's 80th. So I kind of see these people more than my usual family. So, um, you know, my friends from Fright Rags and from London, 1888, Chris you know, Tansky, Chris Ott, those are my boys, top five video for life. Uh, seeing them and hanging out, going to Ponzio's as a uh, diner beforehand, that's usually our Thursday deal. So we did that, and then Friday, which is usually the day you can get your autographs and everything, um, I did not do that. I headed to New Jersey, uh, to East Rutherford for Metallica. I went with one of my friends that I met through the Internet, which is kind of shady at first, but, you know, he was a guy from Belmore. And uh, we actually linked up in a uh, Kevin Smith uh, fan club page. So Mike Generelli, hope you're watching tonight, bro. I had a great weekend with you going to see Metallica. So, yeah, I met up with uh, my boy Meds, and we hung out. And the first night of Metallica was absolutely amazing. The second night of Metallica was absolutely amazing, too. The first night was very special because Pantera opened up. Now... Being that I am an insane Pantera fan, I've saw them every tour from, I'm going to say, Vulgar Display of Power on up until they stopped touring, you know. Obviously, we know Vinnie Paul and Dimebag are not in the game, but they got great guys to fill in. Charlie Benante from Anthrax and Zach Wilde on guitar. And they... I feel like this was their redemption. You know, Phil had has so much like negative press against him over the years. You know, he was blamed for breaking up the band. Um, some other negative, nasty stuff. Uh, just always saying, looking like he's phoning it in. Well, let me tell you something. This was a packed stadium, and you just felt the energy, and you felt it again for that 
that one time because it's like catching lightning in a bottle again. Like it's it's almost impossible, but these guys brought it. I was nervous about Zach being in there because Zach Wilde is his own beast, his own tone. He's totally different from Dimebag, but he was awesome. Like, he wasn't being Zach Wilde in Pantera. He was emulating what Dime did and played these songs. And I know that, you know, it's cheesy to say that Dime and Vinny were looking down, but I just felt that they were. It was so special from the you know from top to bottom. Phil sang his heart out. You know the crowd was singing along and having a great time, and it was just a great energy. You know, I gotta say, I got emotional. You know, I, I teared up. I don't know how many dudes have teared up at a uh, a Pantera show, but I know I wasn't alone because you know I was talking to Meds about it, and that was one of the first things that he told me. He was like, "Dude, I couldn't believe it." And, you know, I cry at all this shit, but like meds for me, for meds to tell me that I was like, whoa, I guess it really was. And I wasn't being like overly dramatic. So, uh, yeah, just that was, it was awesome. Um, so Metallica comes out. So what I did was I'm going to combine all this and I'm going to say that Metallica night one versus Metallica Night 2. So I did a set list. So I'm, what I'm going to do is they played about the same amount of songs each night, but they switched it up because it's a no-repeat thing. So we'll see who wins at the end of the night. But here we go. Creeping Death versus Whiplash. So two great songs, two great openers. I love the Die Chance, so I'm going to go with Creeping Death. So that's one for Night not One. Harvester of Sorrow or For Whom the Bell Tolls. <sighs> these are hard. Like, just to pick. Like, I love both of these tunes. But, like, to pick one is just, like, it's Sophie's choice. I'm an Injustice guy, so I'm going to have to go with Harvester of Sorrow. I'm sorry, For Whom the Bell Tolls. You just got to sit this one out because I've heard you so many times that it was cool to hear Harvester of Sorrow. Holier Than Thou versus Ride the Lightning. Which, it's cool to hear Holier Than Now. It's a real cut. You don't really hear that too often off the Black Album. But I'm still going with Ride the Lightning just for the nostalgia part of it. Um, Load versus Reload. That's uh, King Nothing ver uh, versus Memory Remains. I'm going to go with King Nothing. So now they play two songs in a row from the new album. I'm going to cancel those out. Because at this point, I don't like one more than the other. I just want to hear the new tunes and how they like complement the older stuff. And they fit right in. So 72 Seasons, Lux Esterna, uh, If Darkness Had a Son, and Too Far Gone. I'm going to cancel those out, so they that's a tie. This is a hard one. I think this is the hardest part of it. Fade to Black versus Welcome Home Sanitarium. Both two great songs. Um, very emotional songs. I've heard Fade to Black a lot, so I mean, that's going to be going back to like Harvester of Sorrow versus Bells because I've heard Fade to Black so many times that I haven't really heard Sanitarium Live so much that I'm going to have to pick that one. And it was great to hear that, so I'm going to go that. They played another uh, new song, Shadows Fall versus You Must Burn. They cancel each other out. Moving right along. This was awesome. Two instrumentals, Orion vs. Call of Cthulhu. Great. I'm going to go with Orion. Nothing Else Matters versus The Unforgiven. Nothing Else Matters is a staple. You hear it all the time it, and set lists. So Unforgiven was cool. I haven't heard that in a while. I'd like to see that. Um, Sad But True versus Wherever I May Roam. Another Black Album versus Black Album. Going to go with Wherever I May Roam. The Day That Never Comes versus Moth to a Flame. I'm going to go with Moth to a Flame. Battery versus Blacken. Going with uh, Blacken. Fuel versus Whiskey in a Jar. I'm going to go with Whiskey in a Jar because I can't stand fuel. <laughs> Seek and Destroy versus One. Two great songs. I love the sing-along to Seek and Destroy. I'm going to go with that. And then we wrapped it up with Master Puppets versus Enter Sandman. Master all day, every day. I don't, really don't care if I ever see Master uh, Enter Sandman live again. Um, 
The stage setup was amazing. Um, it was a close tie. It was a close uh, score here. So it looks like night two beat night one, seven to six with three ties. But that's the score. I do have a funny story. Balls drop. These big, huge beach balls. Probably about, I'm going to say, uh, bigger than my arms. It's just like huge. Ten feet or whatever, maybe. It's it's big. So they, they drop and they go all over the place. One of them was limp and it dropped down. And the security guard was just looking at it. So it was like three quarters like deflated. So he throws it down to me. And when I get it, I'm holding it. And all of a sudden, like five guys coming in. So I'm like a bull in a china shop right now. I'm like kicking and like, get the fuck away from me. Making a beeline. So I ended up having one of the balls in my car. And uh, it was just an experience trying to get the hell out of there. Um, the special thing about this whole Metallica thing too is, is that I ran into my cousin, my cousin Tara, that I haven't seen in about um, in about ten years, and uh, we took a picture together, and uh, it was just an amazing experience seeing her to get you know be, being able to be there with her for her to see her uh, first Metallica show. So, uh, cuz, it was awesome. I'm so glad that I ran into you. Let's not wait another 10 years. But you know how that goes. We're busy and everything. She's watching. So, uh, she's watching? Yep. She Actually, yeah. Tony, I gave you that picture, man. It's like on the bottom there. It's the fourth one. Got it. Yep. So, yeah, there she is. My cousin Tara. Good looking girl, man. You know, we got good DNA. So, <laughs> so there you go. It was awesome seeing Tara. So I, that was what's that? Can Tony? I ask you a question? Yeah, go ahead, man. Didn't uh, didn't Wolfgang open up one of these shows? Wolfgang did open up, but Bud Light was more important at that point. <laughs> okay, and I'm Enough sorry. Said. I'm sorry, Eddie Van Halen, that I did not go see your boy. But I heard a lot of people didn't go in for that because, like, the stadium looked from of the pictures I saw, they didn't look. It, it was a, it was a tough. Tough time slot for him to go on. He went on at six on the dot. Oh, you know? well, that's early, yeah. Yeah, they, wow. they even had other uh, people opening up in the parking lot. Prong opened up uh, on Friday and on in the parking in lot? the parking lot. Yeah, really. Yeah, and Overkill played, and that was cool because you could watch them and still do your tailgate. Which right. to me, if you guys know me, if you have a tailgate with me, the tailgate sometimes is better than the actual event. You know, like, I love hanging out because you reminisce. You play the songs you want to hear and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great time. Um, just one thing, I wish it wasn't in the middle of Monster Mania because now we got to go back to Monster Mania mode, the convention. Um, it was awesome. Um, I got to see, again, you know, some of my friends, and I got to meet some very, very cool people. Um I'm going to start off with uh, that. I took a cool photo op with uh, Randy Quaid with a couple of friends. And um, those are my boys. That's Tansky and uh, Chris Ott, like I mentioned before, from Fright Rigs in London, 1888. And my daughter, Zoe, who I have to give a shout out to her right now. Because Zozo she has been going to these conventions since she's four months old. And she's done costume contests and she's already won twice so now they kind of gear it towards the younger kids she's eight right now so a couple weeks beforehand she did this wednesday dance for the talent show at school she's like but daddy i want to do that again i think i could win i'm like all right zozo let's go for it i think you got it kid we set up the uh the goo goo muck by the cramps she went out on the stage she did a little wednesday dance and the kid won. So she was the three-time champion of the kids' contest. And Anthony, again, I'm giving him a shout-out because he did. Thank you. Ah, yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, so Anthony actually said something pretty funny, that Zozo was like the undertaker coming back as the dead man and getting his third title victory. So uh, Zozo is the three-time, three-time, three-time champ. And I just lived through her eyes, and I love to see all the accomplishments and happiness that she has because uh, it makes me happy, man. You know, 
emotionally, like as soon as they mention her name, even before then, just watching her do her thing and own a room and work it, you know, I, I can't, I can't ask for a better kid. She's all heart and she just wants to get out there and be the center of attention. And I'm just, I don't know where she gets that from, but, uh, some say it's passed down, but you know what? I think she's the true star. She's the one that's going to make the Greystone name and legacy to the highest that it's ever been. So I'm a full 100% supportive of her. And uh, she, um, yeah, I don't want to get too emotional and uh, start crying all over this microphone. But it actually might clean it up because, I don't know, Keegan what used this last uh, that is Keegan's microphone, yeah, right. from just an hour ago. Yeah. Right, so I'll, I wouldn't uh, put I'll... my bare hands on it. No? no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, you know, I, like I said, I met some cool people this weekend. We met uh, Lou Diamond Phillips from La Bamba. He was a big one. Um, I love La Bamba. I've gr- I grew up on La Bamba. Like, it was just such a cool moment to meet him. Um, and tell him how much the movie has meant to me. There's probably not a day that does go by that I don't quote it. And it actually was one of those early influences of me wanting to chase my dreams, just like Richie Valens did. And uh, I'm just happy that, you know, like uh, I'm still here to tell the tale because unfortunately for him, it didn't work out that way. He was taken way too soon. And that movie is just, it's one of those movies when you put it on, you know, you um, you can't turn it off. It's one of my favorites, and uh, I'll never stop loving and watching that movie. So I got my soundtrack signed to him. And, uh, oh, taking it a step back now about um, Randy Quaid. So Randy Quaid signed this uh, hat. I have the video up of it. Now, people were complaining about this because what he did was he price gauged or gouged, whatever the hell they call it, during the convention. That's not cool. I don't go on here and like ever bash people that I meet or whatever, but that's one thing that you shouldn't do because you're taking advantage of your fans. You're making the promoter of the convention, you put them in a bad place because who are they going to complain to? You know, they're not going to complain to Randy Quaid. They're going to either say no and walk away or they're going to pay it. So he, what he did was, wasn't cool. And maybe, you know, a lot of people were saying that maybe his line wasn't as long as it should have been because like there was other people that their line was nonstop, you know, Kiefer Sutherland had a line all day. Like the, the, the twins from the shining, they had a line all day. You know, like, it's because they love their fans and they just don't take advantage of them. Yeah, there's a picture with the Shining Twins. It's so funny that the Shining Twins and Zoe are about the same height now. And what's cool about that also is now that I'm one degree of the Shining Twins with Shelley Duvall. Because I'm in a movie now with Shelley Duvall. They were in a movie with Shelley Duvall. And... It was cool. I mentioned that I was in a movie with them, and they they were receptive about it. They're like, oh, that's cool. I hope she's doing well. And um, I will talk about that in a little while, about the Forest Hills. We're in the uh, later stages of that. We're wrapping that up and getting it uh, out. So, um, But I will get into that a little bit later. Um, so Monster Mania was... Uh, again, it was such a great time um, meeting the Lost Boys. It was like a reunion for them. Uh, Kiefer Sutherland was just as cool as he is on TV. You know, fist bump, just, what's up, dude? How you doing? Very cool. So I was glad to meet them. Zozo was kind of thrown back by it because she had no idea that Jason Patrick uh, is the son of... Um, the father, father Merrin from, uh, not Father Merrin, Father uh, Karras from The Exorcist, Jason Miller, just a different name. So I guess Jason Patrick, that's his middle name or something, or he dropped it. But Jason Miller from The Exorcist is Jason Patrick's dad. And uh, we, I, you know, we told her that. Actually, he told her that. And she was like, no way, really? Now, Zozo still hasn't seen The Exorcist in its entirety. She's bailed out as soon as, like, Reagan gets possessed, and you can't blame him. I, 
she that's that's big girl pants. You know, she can't be watching that. I really don't want her watching because that's a lot of explaining to do in that movie. And uh, it's fear. But, oh, so, all right, so we have this picture up. This is MJF. MJF is the uh, current AEW champion. Um, he is a mega heel. He plays the role the whole time. And he really doesn't break character, which is funny. He'll, like, s- throw the uh, the the autographs off the table or kids give them little like toys and stuff and they'll like you know throw it off the table or and say get out of here so i actually made him break which was hysterical because he really doesn't so he was talking to the couple before me and he was saying to them this convention is the smelliest convention that i've ever been to so i look at him and i'm like wow you're saying that before you even smell my armpits but for you, dude, I'm only going to charge you a $100 combo to smell both of them. He cracked a smile for about 2.2 seconds, and then he went back to scour because he's a total pro. I love MJF. Uh, I had to meet him. Uh, it, you know, I was nervous that he was going to rip into me and be unmerciful, but I actually that, you know, I, I actually turned the tables on him and made him crack, which was uh, it was pretty funny. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I met uh, Jack Earl Haley from uh, the Bad News Bears, uh, you know, Kelly Leak. Uh, <laughs> what I laugh about this picture, speaking of ripping one uh, into oneself, I'll do that to me because the size difference between me and Jack Earl Haley is just unbelievable. Like, it looks like when Jimmy Snooker used to team up with Andre the Giant. Like, he could stand on my shoulders and go off the top rope and, like, I think we'd be champion. You know, but uh, he was very cool, you know, and we were talking about how the Bad News Bears probably could not be made this time. Like, there's no way it would be canceled because it's unbelievable that movie's PG. The, what, the shit that is said in that movie and it's hysterical, but yeah, you know, now I don't think people have that thick skin. You know, it's just, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be, definitely wouldn't be PG. I'd probably try to mock that movie X. Um, but, yeah, that uh, that's one of my favorites, too. We were, I was actually telling him that uh, Engelberg, the catcher, is my uh, spirit animal. And, um, you know, me and Anthony always would talk about uh, why are uh, biscuits and coleslaw are extra, but in Engelberg's voice, why are biscuits and coleslaw are extra? <laughs> But yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Bad News Bears films, so uh, it was good, you know, meeting him. And then we met uh, Dermot uh, Mulroney from uh, Young Guns. Uh, he played Dirty Steve, and he was also in Scream Six. Zoe wanted to meet him for Scream. I wanted to meet him for Young Guns because he has one of my favorite lines in Young Guns when they're eating the peyote and they're coming back into town, and uh, Casey Samasco is like. Hey, how come they ain't killing us? And he turns around and deadpan with his hick voice or whatever. Because we're in the spirit world, asshole. They can't see us. So I told him of the times. I've never done peyote, but the mushroom times. I probably have quoted that many times because you're in the spirit world. And, you know, you are invincible. And you think you could do things. But sometimes... You're not. Most of the times you're not. And I'm happy that I uh, hung up those boots long ago because there's no way I could take flight ever again. (laughs) So uh, with that being said, um, I actually wanted to uh, play a song for uh, one of my my friends. They're in the band Wrecked. Uh, They are in Long Island Outfit. Uh, The band is consistent of um, John Castiglia and Richie Vanen and Doug Garfinkel. They just released a uh, a new album. It's called Working Man's Punk. And I'm just queuing up the song right now because I really dig it, man. Like, and I'm not saying it because they're just my friends, but I really feel like they put their heart and their energy into this. And... Uh, This is the first song off of that album, and it's called Crash and Burn. So here you go. This is Wrecked. When I have a 
All right. That was uh, Wrecked. Uh, Tony, you had a uh, question about that title of the album. I did have a question there. Uh, whoops. Am I here? I did have a question there, Nick. The uh, what was that called? Working man's uh, working man's punk. wasn't Wasn't the Grateful Dead? Didn't they have an album similar? Yes, like? they had an album called Working Man's Dead, oh, okay. and uh, Johnny and Richie are are Deadheads, and they are influenced by the Dead. So it's kind of like their tip of uh, their the guys you just played influenced by the Dead. Yeah, they Cause are because you wouldn't know it from that. You term. wouldn't. No, 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 because uh, they you know they play uh, they play punk rock. But uh, if you listen to the rest of the album, there's some solos in there and stuff and some uh, breakdowns, and uh, you could hear some jamming going on. Definitely with the stuff I used to play with Johnny, too. Like we, I'm, I like the Dead. I, I wouldn't call myself a deadhead. They're, they were influenced, you know, uh, one of the influencers of me. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, they're a great band. You know, they just released this album. Guys definitely should go check them out. They're on Instagram, uh, Wrecked Long Island, New York. They recorded this at uh, the studio that Demon Scar jams at. And uh, Greg Gavitt, who uh, helped produce and mix the album, he's so great to work with. Um, and he's very talented himself. So when uh, you go in there, uh, you know, just... Ask for Greg and he'll you're off to the races. If you have an idea, he'll even uh, come up with his own and you guys can collaborate. So uh just wanted to uh just wanted to put that out there for my friends, man. So yeah, Wreck, definitely a good uh outfit. Uh you did mention though, I forgot to show one picture and I wanted to uh bring that up. It's uh it's me and Lorraine Bracco. Uh I met her once before, but I had to go back and talk to her because yo, look at that picture, man. Like Lorraine Bracco is still a fox. She has it. And she is so, like, charismatic and everything. Like, sh just smiling and just so cool. Like, just a cool New York chick, man. And just, like, uh, uh, her handler, uh, she's like, oh, I love your vest. And, like, uh, her handler actually asked me, he's like, did you go to Metallica last night? And I'm like, yeah, I'm actually going uh, night two. So... He said to Lorraine, would you want to go to Metallica? And she was like, no, not really. And then I was like, are you sure? I'm like, I'll buy you a ticket. And then afterwards, we can hit the Copacabana after, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're too sweet, honey. And so that, you know, she asked me to sit next to her. And oh. we take the picture and everything. But uh, you said uh, she's from your hometown, right? She is from Hicksville. And she, but she rarely talks about it. So I, if I was there, I would have busted her balls about it. Oh, yeah, man. But if she said something like that, I like your vest, I'd be like, boing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Swing. <laughs> but, yeah, she is just like, oh, man, she's still got it. Karen Hill, damn, well, after all these years. Uh, you fall in love with some of these characters that you see through the years, and then when you meet them, they're just as sweet off of, off of uh, camera. Some of them are dickheads, you know, that overcharge for hats that say shit is full, but what are you going to do? All right. <laughs> So, um, now I'm, I'm sure everyone's wondering, like, why is he not talking about the Gilgo case? This is like, you know, what's up with the Gilgo case? What's going on? Honestly, before I even get into that, let me get my, uh, my armchair detective hat on. Get that shit going. So, really nothing is going on with Gilgo case right now. I mean, they're looking into all the, um, into the, all the materials that they got from, from Rex's house. They did identify the body the other day, uh, the Jane Doe number seven from Medford, which is good. Um, I really think they're preparing this because I feel like Suffolk County police and Ray Tierney want to put this on a silver platter and get a good name for themselves because of how they handled this investigation from day one. They want to put a name in a face to all these crimes. I've said it from day one. I don't think Rex is a hundred percent involved with all this. Uh, Shannon Gilbert, she died. She didn't, she didn't, uh, she was murdered. She wasn't, uh, she didn't hallucinate and drown in an inch of water. There's no way. I think she walked into something that she saw that scared her and she ran for it. And, I think that it was a cover-up. Do I think James Burke did it? No. 
He might have been there. Yeah, maybe even Rex was there. But I feel like that poor girl is going to be on the back burner this whole time. I don't think they'll ever come up with a positive like answer to what happened to her. And that's a damn shame because I feel like she should have some sort of justice. You know, a lot of these girls have should 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 have some sort of justice. I think a lot of people just looked at them and like, ah, they're pieces of shit sex workers. They're human beings, you know. Maybe they had didn't have a great upbringing and maybe they wanted to make money. You never know. One of the most beloved movies of all time, Pretty Woman. Look, she was a, a sex worker, but everyone loved her. I guess because it was Pretty of Julia Roberts, you know, with a wig on. And, you know, Richard Gere. And it was a, it was a love story. But... Maybe these girls didn't have, obviously they didn't have a happy ending because they were found, you know, in pieces and some of them weren't found at all and some of them are still unidentified. And, you know, this case is going to be around for a long time and I feel like Rex is going to get blamed for some of it. Maybe they'll even try to pin it on him. Because what God knows what they could do with that DNA that they have of him. And the, I feel like the public will accept it. But it's just one of those, I'm not a, a conspiracy theorist, I don't go that route, but I feel like there's a lot of shade that's involved with this. And it's not my, like I said before, I'm going to say it again, just in case you haven't heard me talk about it. It's not because I hate cops. I have family, I have friends that wear the badge. They're normal people, they want to go home too. They're doing their job. Just because a few pieces of shit didn't want to do their job and they took advantage of their uh, station in life and try to cover things up, you know, everyone else has to be held accountable. And that sucks. It happens with everywhere, though, you know? There's people that I work with that are pieces of shit and then, you know, they get in trouble and it brings heat on the office that you work in. I'm sure you guys can relate to that stuff. And I'm going a little bit off the topic, but that's just how I roll. So I can reel myself back in. But guys, I can do any fucking thing I want right now because it's my show. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, why don't you think uh, Burke was involved? Because a lot of people do think he was I don't think involved. You know what? I don't think, uh, I don't think he killed anyone. I think he was just into rough sex. I think he brought the, uh, you know, into weird shit. And I think that he probably went to these sex parties and stuff that they're accusing him of. And I think that... Um, he took the FBI off of it because he had so much heat on him for the shit that he did that he was just like, no, I don't want the feds around. That's like, I don't know, like a guy working in the post office and he's working next to postal inspectors. This is not autobiographical. I do work next to postal <laughs> inspectors and everything. So, guys, if you listen, I'm fucking squeaky clean, man. <laughs> but, yeah, and then it's just like you're on edge because you have these people of authority around and they're – you know, he at one point was like the king of the mountain. But when you bring the feds in, that's a whole nother game, you know. So, like, I feel like he wanted them to back off because of personal stuff. I don't think it was because of, like, killing anyone. But, th again, I'm just an armchair detective. What the fuck do I know? I don't know. Um, but, yeah, the Gilgo thing, that's, that's like my little update on that. What I did want to talk about is, though, the viral sensation, the flavor of the day is the Alabama boat brawl. Holy shit. I hope this stays around for a long time because there are so many <laughs> clips and different angles of this insane fight that are going on and commentary and just chair shots and, like, dudes swimming across the, uh, uh, across the, uh, the jetty. First, I want to talk about that guy, the guy that swam across. All right. I have no, I'm not trying to like put my size up against him because obviously this dude's in shape, but like I even have enough hard enough time getting out of a pool like on a, a regular ladder. This dude swam in his clothes and pushed himself up on a dock. That is an insane amount of upper body strength, and he was ready to throw down. You know, 
what I'm gathering from it, it is, you, you know, you had these um, five kids that rolled up, these white kids that felt like they were, you know, better than everyone and were able to just park at the dock and they were told no and then it turned into a fight and it looked like five uh five white guys beating the shit out of a black guy but then all of a sudden man i don't know if it was the dude in the water that turned into gremlins and then like 20 came out of the woodwork but then it was on man there was like all kinds of mayhem and you hear like one of the commentaries like oh the white boys are scared now the white boys are scared yeah they were scared but i gotta say they looked hammered because I saw one of them take like three chair shots like Mick Foley in that versus The Rock and still keep coming. So maybe he was on Angel Dust or something or I don't know, but that dude wasn't falling. I did see someone else take a chair shot that was pretty nasty, and that dude got arrested right away. They took him into custody. And um, I mean, as much as it's fun to see and everything, and you laugh at the commentary, I laughed at it a bunch of times. It boils down to this. It's just turning into another racial tension thing right now. We don't need another racial tension thing right now. It's never going to go away. Um, No matter how hard anyone tries to progress and be better and love everyone, it's always going to revert back to that, you know, and especially now being that we have racial tension served with generation pussy on like a plate. So now it's like everything is, you say one word, you get fucking canceled. You're out of there and everything. And I wish it didn't have to go there, but unfortunately that's the, the day and age that we live in right now. You know, you got to watch what you say. You got to watch what you do. And um, the whole world was watching these people beat the shit out of each other unmercifully. And, you know, the update on that, there was three men that were charged with assault. And they said there's going to be others. And uh, I'm sure it's going to be around for a while. And I'm sure we're going to get more angles and stuff and some more urban commentary. I love the urban commentary. It's great. It's fantastic. One of my favorite bootlegs from back in the day was Alien vs. Predator, and it was shot in a uh, probably an urban area, and the commentary on the background of that was so hysterical. Like I used to share it to all my friends. I still actually own the copy of it. Like, oh shit, the alien is coming out of the Predator right now, and like <laughs> it was it's hysterical. And like um I don't even want to like go there because I don't want you to get the wrong idea of me. I'm just a good guy that loves everyone. And I think that poking fun at each, at each other is the medicine, but you've got to be able to take it as much as you put it out. And we could do better. We could do better as a society to not immediately go there and be like, you know, us versus them or who – whatever versus whatever so hopefully uh alabama puts uh you know simmers down right now and uh it goes away but who knows what do you think tony 100 percent, pal i think you were spot on it's uh i it wasn't a racial thing you know and i, I and it it's it's sad when it gets turned into that when it gets I don't know, I guess politicized like like many things do. I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, and you look at the whole video. There's black punching black, white punching white. You know, this wasn't. These were just a bunch of schmucks who wouldn't move. The the officer, the guard. I don't know yeah. what you call him. He just asked these guys to move their He's little pon- white trash pontoon. Yeah. <laughs> and they <laughs> and they wouldn't move. And that it just stemmed from that. It had nothing to do with anything else. No. You know, like the the media eats that shit up. They love putting stories out there. Right. You know, not even like, I don't want to get into politics and all that, but just look at the view, man. The view doesn't even have a (laughs) script probably. They just go on there and they just talk so much shit and get re every year renewed, renewed, renewed. And it's just because of the stupid shit that either human beings are doing or the politics are doing. And, like, it's just... They, they win awards and they get all the views and stuff, but that's just another, uh, you know. The best thing ever on The View just happened last week. 
I don't know if you saw this. Did what, the Behar fall? Yeah, that yeah. was the best thing ever had to happen on that show. <laughs> the best thing that happens on that show is when it's off and the next show comes on, man. <laughs> You know, I, I'm just right. not. I'm just not a fan of the view. Me like, neither. You know what? Like, I have my own personal things about it, and the reason that I'm not a fan of it is my mom is or was a diehard Rosie O'Donnell fan, and she waited online to get in there, and Rosie basically dismissed her and treated her like shit, and I felt bad for my mom because I was like, you know, she wanted to meet her. I think she even brought her cannolis and stuff, and like, wow. yeah, they they like didn't accept it, and like. Come on, dude. My mother's harmless. Mama Rosie. Everyone knows Mama Rosie. She's lovable, man. Like, you know, you're going to you're gonna dismiss an old school Italian woman giving you cannolis? Like, That's it. Fuck you, Rosie O'Donnell. We know you love the cannolis. You know, you <laughs> well, love no, them just she as doesn't. much. No, she doesn't love them anymore. <laughs> oh, those cannolis. <laughs> so that's the reason why I don't like the view. There, there's, well, we have a comedian at the club, Joey Cola, you know, Long Island uh, legend of comedy. He used to do the warm-up. For her show, yeah. He to this day he says she's the most charitable person he's ever known in his life. So she, so she does nice things. Yeah, but she just comes across as like she's just mean to old stuff. ladies, I guess. Or I guess <laughs> mean to my mother. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I know she, you know, cut her teeth here and stuff. And I'm not trying to diss the club and get canceled on my first episode. <laughs> <laughs> So maybe I was a little harsh on Rosie O'Donnell. No, you know you're what? fine. It's you, fine. You, uh, you fucked with my mother, and don't fuck with anyone's mother. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I just wanted to uh, actually get into one thing. Um, I do have a sponsor. It was pretty cool. It came out of nowhere. Um, it's called Cloud 8 Delta 8. Um they actually are sponsoring me, talking my nonsense. But they're very cool people. And the reason I'm sponsoring this is I feel like you're taking chances going out there buying street drugs. So you might as well keep it legal and stuff that is tested. So you keep it legal. You're avoiding the street due to the simple fact because you really don't know what the hell you're buying these days. So Delta 8. THC actually works well because it results in feeling euphoric, the happiness and the relaxation without the paranoia and the anxiety, which is the worst. So you could use this product also for medicinal purposes. So for all the information on this product, please go to cloud8delta8.com. Check them out. Um, yeah, I can't wait to get baked next time when they uh, send me their stuff. So, yeah, definitely check out uh, Cloud 8 Delta 8. Hopefully they send me strains don't go, that don't get me the munchies or whatever and just put me to sleep because who can, you know, who doesn't need a good night's sleep? I know I sure can. So um, I do want to plug a couple of things, though, that I am involved in. Um, there is a final campaign for the Forest Hills right now. That's the movie I was talking about that I'm in with Shelley Duvall and Edward Furlong. Um, we're looking for the last of the deliverables, the rescore, the remix, and the recolor funds. It's going to be back at Smod Castle Cinemas for another screening in December, early January. Right now, I'm going to uh, show you a little uh, clip. It's a little sneak peek of it. It's only like 15 seconds, but just to get you enticed and excited because I am excited to put this movie out. It, we worked very hard on it and uh, I hope you guys like it. This is it. Now you all have to be very careful of the beasts out here. I'm not going to tell you what kind they are. Every single time I tell the locals, they all just laugh at me like I'm some sort of clown. All right, so that's the uh, little clip. Um, yeah, I'm very excited about that. Uh, like I said, Chico Mendez worked his, his ass off, uh, does a very physical, uh, demanding role. Uh, I worked with some very talented people, Scott Hansen from uh, Digital Thunderdome and uh, Scott Goldberg, you know, had the, uh, he wrote and directed the movie. 
all-star cast, you know, Shelly Duvall's first role in 20 years. It's great that I got to meet her and actually see her work. And uh, I feel like it's going to uh, take off once uh, you guys see it. So I'm really excited about it. So now, um, continuing with uh, the movie thing, I'm also a part of this another movie that's coming out that uh, actually Demon Scar is um, going to be featured on the soundtrack, and we're actually going to be in the movie as well, the full band. So this is going to be like kind of like Demon Scar's Hard Day's Night. It's uh, it's called Sweet Meats. Um, it's by Ricky Glore. Um, Right now, it's in pre-production. They have an Indiegogo right now. So I have a little uh, teaser of that with uh, a song that we wrote for the uh, movie called Eat the People. So here we go. Sweetest beat from a God-fearing man. I've been off more than I can chew. I walk away, but I can't quit you. Eat the people. Eat the people. That's it. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that was uh, Eat the People. That's going to be featured in Sweet Meats, directed by Ricky Glore. Um, he's going to come down to Jason's Woods. We're going to be playing there on October 7th. We're going to do a music video there, and he's going to kill the shit out of us. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Uh, I, I can't wait for that. Um, just a little plug in on the Demon Skull front. Uh, that way. That way. Some way. You see it down there in the corner? <laughs> I'll figure it out one day. Yeah, right, here. right there? Oh, yeah, here we go. Boom, like, boom, right yeah, there. Man. There's Demon Scar's new logo. We like it. I hope you guys like it. I think it's pretty cool. We're going to get uh, T-shirts and hats made of it. Uh, you know, uh, who doesn't love Cerebus? So we wanted to take a little, uh, you know, little mythical creature from the past and uh, scar him up and uh, bring him out to the forefront and... Uh, because we got to be mean and tough, you know? So that's uh, Demon Scar's new uh, new logo. Um, Unhealed just released uh, their first single, uh, Emily of Peace. That's uh, my guitarist Meds, his solo thing. That just was released um, on August 25th. Titan Soar, we're going to uh, team up with them and do a cover of Born to Raise Hell. That's going to be released on August 25th. Demon Scar's new single, The Coldest Hell, is going to be released on August 31st. On September 13th, I'm releasing a new solo single, Haunted. It's actually a cover of the old Pogue song that's in Sid and Nancy. Um, I always wanted to do a cover of that song. So you guys get to see a little bit of a, uh, a tender side of the Nizzer, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, we're going to be doing that. Um, also, um, uh, two days after that, I'm going to be at the Webster theater and I'm opening up for Shaggy Too Dope from, uh, Insane Cloud and Posse. I'm doing that with my longtime collaborator, Kay Lovely. I'm going to try another thing, you know, podcast tonight. Next month I'm doing a hip hop show. Just got to roll with it, baby. You know, I got to just jump in every vehicle possible, get this face out there. Because I think I got it going on right now, so I might as well continue with that, you know? So, um, again, I did talk about Jason's Woods. That's going to be October 7th. That's going to be in Lancaster. It's an awesome event. Um, you guys should go check it out if you're into the Halloween thing. If you don't want to travel that far, my buddies and longtime family at Schmidt's Farm, I'm going to be guesting there, doing the butcher again. So they're opening up. They're building the set. I'm seeing pictures. I still haven't visited it in, in person, but they always do it uh, Do it up. So uh, Schmidt's Farm, definitely check that out. That's coming out. And, um, yeah, I think uh, – I think that's it. I think we're gonna wrap this baby up. I think um, I think I'm, I'm I'm good. I think I uh, fulfilled my prophecy for uh, for episode one, guys. I, I don't even know what to say. Like I think I had a great time. I can't wait to come back and do more. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I 
did putting it out there. Um, thank you so much for all your kind words throughout the weeks leading up to this, for the messages today, for your support. Just continue to like, share, and repeat, and repost. And I'll see you guys next week. This is the Nizza, and I'm out. I'm a God-fearing man I've been off more than I can chew I'm